Hello and welcome to another Out of the Park Baseball tutorial. So for this video I wanted to go over a game mechanic that's actually not new to the game but it's one that a lot of players aren't familiar with. It involves setting your ticket price and actually using that to influence your team's budget. And I imagine most people, because I know I did this for several versions of the game, would just set one ticket price in the off season before season ticket sales happen and forget about it for the next 12 months until the next email came into my inbox. But if you learn this game mechanic and how to use it to your advantage, especially if you're a small market team, and I know a lot of you who I've talked to in the YouTube comments and on Twitch are like me in that you generally prefer to play teams that don't have the biggest budgets necessarily. This is a great way to increase that, get a little bit more breathing room, invest in the team some more. And if you go long enough in it, like you'll see in my OTP 22 save, you can get a ludicrous budget just by reusing and testing out this mechanic. So I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, but first, I'll show you how it worked for us this year in OTP 23 with the Cleveland Guardians. And really the only requirement to this is a little bit of real life patience and winning games in OTP, which sometimes is easier said than done. But hopefully within a few years of starting your save, you've got a team that at least has a winning record, if not challenging for a playoff spot. And as long as you have that, you can use this game mechanic and really improve your team. The place to get started with this game mechanic is in the front office tab of your team. Within that, we're only going to focus on two widgets, which are the attendance info and the attendance chart. Within the attendance chart, you'll see early in the season, you're generally not going to sell out games, even if you're the largest teams in the largest markets with high fan interest. And that's set up to mimic real life, where often in the colder seasons, you sell less tickets because people would rather be out when it's warm rather than when it's cold. So usually even the best teams won't start selling out until June, maybe late May. And with that, you just have to be prepared to not make any of these adjustments. So I don't even start looking at the attendance and ticket prices until June 1st. Once you get to that point though, you'll start analyzing your attendance. And what you're really looking for is sellouts. So once you start getting to the point where you're selling out frequently, which for Cleveland this year wasn't actually until July because we started with low fan interest and we had a decent but not awesome start to the season. But once we got on a roll and we hit a winning streak of about 13 somewhere in here, we started selling out every game. And at that point, I started increasing the ticket price. So I actually started with the same default season ticket price since, you know, first year of the save, you don't get to make as many changes. And $21.25 was the ticket price. And I started small. I only increased the ticket price 75 cents to $22. Then I simmed one or two games, saw that attendance didn't dip at all, and then increased it another dollar. And I kept doing that every one to two games as I just hit continue, continue, continue. And it didn't stop for about four or five home series. And at that point, the ticket price had gone from $21.25 up to $33. And that doesn't sound like the biggest deal until you look at how it impacts your budget. So this green line here, that's the season ticket sales. And that income is fixed because you sold those tickets at a given price. Those fans aren't going to pay anymore. However, this entire yellow part of the bar, that is where the price increase is. So for us this year, that was about 23 to 25,000 fans. So just a quick estimate of that impact, we increased prices about $10 per ticket for about 25,000 tickets per game over the course of half the season. So let's say 40 home games. That's $250,000 in extra ticket revenue, 40 home games, 
That's $10 million a year in revenue that directly impacts my budget for next year. That alone would have been a 6 or 7% increase to my budget, which in Cleveland is a huge deal. But at the risk of sounding like an infomercial, wait, there's more. Because we were able to get the ticket price up to $40 in the regular season, and then after game 162, that price locks in, and that's your playoff ticket price. And you have thousands more tickets selling at this highly locked in rate. Because of that, if you go into the accounting for us this year, you can see all told last year they had $22 million in gate revenue. This year, we were able to get it up to $50 million. And then in the two playoff series we've had so far, we've added another $17 million in playoff revenue. So our balance is going to be over $80 million in profit. And even a Dolan family member will give us a budget increase after that. Of course, I say that and watch it not happen on stream. But in every other save I've ever played, it's happened. So going back into what I said at the very beginning, that this is a mechanic that's been in the game for a long time. This is OTP 22. This is a save I started in 21, imported to 22 with an expansion expos team. And it took us a couple years to get good, but we managed to make it happen. And we followed this same trick and we got from, I think we were very similar, $20 a ticket, 30 years into the future, we're at 138. Now I took this save another 10 years, but I've since lost the file, but kept increasing it. I think it was over 150 whenever I stopped through the same exact process. And really the main limiting factors are, can you keep winning? And how often you want to check this. If you're simming a month at a time, you're not going to be able to make as many price increases. But if you're hitting continue, 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 you'll see it. And then you get the feedback right here. When you're adjusting this, there's only two things you have to look out for. One is the steep drops in attendance. I'm talking 20% of your max capacity or more. Doesn't mean you've necessarily done something wrong. It just tells you you found your temporary ceiling. And until you get a little bit further, win a few more games, you can't increase the ticket prices anymore without tanking attendance. But you can keep it at that price or maybe drop it somewhere in between your last number and your current number. And then slowly but surely, attendance will climb back up. You'll get sellouts and then you can resume this process. The other thing is you just have to keep winning. Now you don't have to win 80% of your games, but you still need to maintain your level of performance depending on you know your fan loyalty, market size, expectation. You're probably going to have to stay at least a playoff team though. So if you have a rebuilding year, you may have to put a stop to this entirely. But in general, if you're competing, you can keep doing this basically indefinitely as long as you keep winning. So now you may be thinking that's all well and good for the middle of the season, but what about the off season? What is my next ticket price supposed to be? How do I, do I keep this for season ticket sales? Because certainly you'd love to have a doubling of your ticket price like we saw with Cleveland and then sell 10,000 or 12,000 season tickets at that price. Unfortunately, you can't raise the season ticket prices as quickly as you raise your in-season ticket prices, the per-game tickets. So what that means is when you get to the first day of the off-season, you'll see what your average ticket price aggregated between the season tickets you sold in the off-season and the price of every ticket you sold during the season at these higher prices. And it will give you an average across the entire season. And you look at that number, the average one, and you input that as your season ticket price. And then you don't think about it again until June 1st. The reason being, if you increase your ticket prices by, you know, if you doubled them like in Cleveland, we'll probably get to an aggregate of about $25, $28, I'm guessing. That would be a 20 to 30% increase year over year, which would be a noticeable bump in real life. And I think the game simulates 
that kind of fan impact as well from having that much of an increase where fans start revolting a little bit and just don't renew. So I think that adds a little bit of realism and helps rate limit a mechanic that already is very powerful and could quickly become out of control otherwise. So with that said, please take this into your save. Let me know how it goes for you and especially those of you who sim really quickly. Let me know what you can get your ticket prices up to. But I think it's one of the best ways and it's not necessarily difficult to implement. It's just more about the patience level. And if you're willing to put in a little extra time while simming, you can see huge rewards, especially for the small markets. So let me know how it goes for you. And hopefully I'll see you in Twitch chat. And if not, uh, hope to see you in the comments here. Happy simming.